Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This is the second in a series of uh, video modules on public choice economics, or the applications of economics uh, to the political process. In this video module, we're going to be concerned with something called cyclical majorities, and also with rational non-voting and rational uh, ignorance. Uh, in the main, we would expect uh, rational individuals to choose consistently. That is, if in fact they prefer uh, A to B and B to C, then when given a choice between A and B, they would choose A. When given a choice between B uh, and C, they would, they would choose B. And when given a choice uh, between A and C, they would choose A because A is preferred to B, B is preferred to C, and, and, and so forth. Uh, in the political process, you can have perfectly rational individuals with consistent preferences and consistent choices, uh, but the outcome can be uh, somewhat uh, inconsistent, uh, amazing, uh, in fact. Uh, this demonstration was made by Ken Kenneth Arrow a number of uh, years ago and can be uh, made here uh, in the form of a table that looks uh, something like this. Here we have three individuals, uh, one, two, and three. And these individuals have three uh, political options before them, A, B, and C. A prefers, uh, A is ranked highest for individual one, then second is uh, B and, and C. Uh, two prefers B at the highest priority, then C, then A, three, C, A, and, and B. Now let's put these things, these options up in, in a political uh, vote, a uh, pairwise political vote. That is, we put uh, option A against uh, B. And let's see who votes uh, for these uh, different options. Uh, we would see that an individual one would prefer A over B. So we put individual one uh, there. Individual two would prefer B over A since a, B is ranked highest and A lowest. So we put individual two uh, there. Individual three would prefer, well, A is second, B is third, so individual uh, three would prefer uh, uh, A. So A uh, wins that uh, contest. Now let's suppose that we pit uh, A against C, and we see which one uh, wins uh, this voting uh, decision. Uh, if we put A against C, then individual one will vote for A over C, given the ranking there. So we put individual one there. Individual two would prefer C over A, so we put uh, individual two uh, there. Individual three would prefer C over, over uh, A. Uh, as a consequence, uh, uh, we would put individual three uh, here. And now, let's put, uh, since C won this election, let's put C against uh, B and see which one uh, tends to win uh, the election, C and B. Well, we, we go back here and we ask who, who prefers B or C. Well, a, individual one would prefer B over that. Uh, individual two uh, would prefer uh, B over, over uh, C, and individual three would prefer uh, uh, C over, over uh, B. So what happens here is that A wins here, wins over B, uh, C wins uh, here, and therefore when putting C against B, we would expect uh, uh, C uh, to win, since C, B dot A, and A, B dot uh, B. But what we have is that in this process, uh, B wins. Well, we can go back through, and we can pit uh, A against B, and we're back up here, and we can continue the process. And this is why we call it a sort of kind of cyclical majority, because the voting process can go round uh, and round. Uh, the lesson here is that you can have some pretty peculiar outcomes uh, in the political process.